I wish I knew. Welcome back to My Husband is My Best Friend. Sydney Hicks and wife Monique respond to her son Shalom's public statement about their relationship. The title of our conversation or the theme of it is called The Long Way Around Cause Ain't No Shortcuts. Pickles, stop playing with that paper, please. The reason we're having it is a multitude of reasons, but we're going to start off with there was a Instagram that was put up, or I guess. It was TikTok, baby. TikTok that was put up by. My son, my oldest son, Shalon. And this is what I want to say to this. There are some people that are saying, oh, you should be ashamed of your mothering skills. You should be ashamed of yourself. This is what I'll say. Let's let it play out. Because the same ones that said to me, I was crazy, I was deranged, we watched it play out. So just like with my son, we'll watch this play out. And I do want to address this though, Shalon. When you say her daddy, her daddy, then that's when mommy going to say stop playing because you know this has been Uncle Sid your whole life. Uncle Sid knew you before you knew you. So for you to say her three sons, yes, you're absolutely right. He has three sons. He can't claim you as his son because he's always been Uncle Sid and he knows your daddy very well. And love that brother. And the irony of all of this is not what is said, but what's left off. Yes. See, you're you're leaving off the fact that the last time we laid eyes on you, your mother got you everything you needed for the newborn baby about three years ago. You're forgetting about how I from Georgia am talking you through getting your car after we gave you the half of the down payment for it. And you were 31 years of age, 32 years of age at that point. And I'm negotiating the deal with the dealer for you as you sit there. And you have the vehicle you're driving right now because of your mother. These are the things that you're leaving out when you are expressing what you're expressing in reference to your mother. You're not expressing the relationship that you have with your father where you spoke ill to him, not to mention spoke ill to your mother, but somehow your mother and father and I all have a loving relationship and communicate back and forth because of the love that we have for you. The one thing these individuals and to the individuals out here that oftentimes speak after they've heard one side of the story. There's an old saying, believe half of what you see and none of what it is that you hear. Please don't take our word for it. But what we will convey is this. Those who are parents and have raised their parents up to being adults. Your children. Raise their children up to being adults. Right on. <laughs> <laughs> Those who are parents that raise their children into adulthood know that there comes a time and a place in which they determine their own decisions, their own path. You can have multiple children that multiple children that are raised in one house, but they act and they take on different things. The reason why it was so important for us to entertain these conversations that we typically have privately or that we're influenced to have privately amongst the people in our community is because we need to stop being embarrassed about being human beings and about being black human beings. You will oftentimes hear us saying we are embarrassing ourselves in front of them. Who is them? Who are they? Because when you hear someone articulate these things, that is the slaves mentality that makes us believe that we as black need to conduct ourselves with dignity because white people are watching. You should conduct yourself with dignity because the spirit of you is watching. But we need to have these conversations out loud and taboo because we 
have a finite period of time together here on this earth. You will travel through infinity with the spirit that you have all alone, and you will not remember the ridicule that you receive, but you will be judging yourself. You will be t determining for the rest of your life which way that you go as you have thus far. So this conversation is about speaking directly to what situations are. And many people oftentimes, when they are uh, presented with an issue, they stay quiet, they hide, they disappear. And what we're saying is that's not who we are because what you cannot do is you cannot trick an honest person. Come on. You can demean, you can say whatever you wanna say about them negatively, but what will happen is truth has a way of standing the test of time. I, I, I forgot to have my, my phone to read the last text message that I gave to you, Shalom, where I told you about the understanding of how you are speaking to a woman and how you as a man and how you perceive things may be completely different from how your wife, how your mother, how your sister, how your daughter will look at things. And when you learn how to communicate a little bit better, then things will happen a little bit better. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Young man, because of the challenges that this young brother has had with mental illness. So we're communicating that out loud to speak to our community, to say, listen, y'all, if we have more public conversations, there will be less private angst. Come on. There will be less private issues that we carry on because we're afraid to communicate in front of white. So when we get to a place where you want to be free, you will stop being scared to say what's real. You'll stop being fearful of having conversations that normally take place in private and nobody ever really knows the outcome. And, and from there, when you were saying earlier about how we're looking, how we're looking, how we're looking in front of white. When I do hear our brother Greg Mathis say, the studio is watching y'all and the executives are watching y'all, so what? If the executives are watching closely, the individuals that would want to interact with us are those who are engaged are in, and are in alignment with what is true. Come on. See, the first question would not be, uh, Stephen A. Smith, why did you video someone? Or you won't entertain uh, Kevin Hart is the biggest star in the world. She said that. Not only did she say that, not only when she spoke about Oprah and Tyler, these are individuals that you failed to hear that she said she loves them. And when you love folks, you tell them what they need to know, not what they want to hear. We've put, in, we've put certain individuals in such a status that we've disallowed them to be human beings. And on the note with taking the long way around and that there are no shortcuts. So you could take the shortcut and cross through Miss Evelyn's yard, but you know she got a pit bull. And he may or may not be in that yard, but you know for sure if you get in that yard and he is in that yard, you will definitely be chased. It is a bit safer to go around the long way because not only is it the right thing to do because you're not, cutting through somebody's yard, their grass, trespassing on their property. But what happens is it may be a longer journey, but it's worth the trip. So we're gonna take the long way around and we're not gonna call out these individuals on platforms like this, we're gonna call them up. Now, please don't confuse, when Monique is standing on stage, she has an artistic paintbrush designed to paint her life and make people laugh in a way in which a comedian is supposed to do. So her life experiences are fair game. Thanks for tuning in to My Husband is My Best Friend.